So my name is Cameron Riddington, and for my PhD project, I'm working on understanding gene regulation at a sort of deeper level than has previously been recognised, and I'm working on my two favourite proteins, which are BAP1 and ASXL. But first, I'll tell you how I got here to do <laughs> PhD in biochemistry. So I went to King's High School in Dunedin, there's a couple of familiar faces here that used to teach me, which was Mrs. Johnson, my old biology teacher. Um, so I did all the sciences at high school, and then I went to Otago, I didn't really know what I wanted to do out of that, so I did health science, which had like a broad range of things. Um, when I was looking at my paper list, in second semester, it's in Bio 192, Introduction to Biochemistry. I had no idea what biochemistry was, and I did the paper, and it was the, my favorite thing that I've ever done, that's why I'm doing it now. And so that's me there, uh, graduating this year from my BSc with honors, which was majoring in biochemistry and mining in genetics. So my project's sort of biochemistry, but with a genetic sort of background to it, so I like them both. So to follow on with what Sarah was saying before, um, I'm going to just start out with a bit of a biological mass problem. So in every cell, so humans are really complex, and we have a lot of DNA, right? So in, every, in the human genome, there's about 6 billion base pairs of DNA. And each base pair is about a third of a billionth of a meter. So a third of six is two, so two meters worth of DNA in every cell. You have trillions of cells in your body. But the nucleus in a cell is about 10 millionths of a meter across. So you have to put 10 meter, two meters worth of DNA into this tiny little storage, like tiny little area. So that's based off of, off of how DNA is stored. So there's a DNA storage complex, which is called the nucleosome, which is this bundle of proteins. There's four proteins, which are called histone proteins. There's histone H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. And DNA is wrapped around these histone proteins, and they form sort of beads on a string. So like that diagram before, there was DNA wrapped around the nucleosomes, and they all together. The beads in the string interact, and they all fold up really compactly, and you put that two meters into ten millionths of a meter, right? So it's so compactly folded, how do we access that to get expressed in your body? It's a thing called epigenetics. So there's a layer of regulation in terms of genetic information that's above your genes. So epi means above. And there's marks that can sort of determine whether DNA is expressed and turned on or it's turned off. So an example of one mark is the trimethylation of histone H3 that causes the DNA to be accessible and actively transcribed. And then there's ubiquitination of histone H2A. So Ubiquitin is just this little regulatory protein that gets added to the nucleus. Now. So gene expression is carefully controlled. There's a ton of different proteins in your body. So different tissues have a, like patterning of these epigenetic marks. So the pattern in your eyes, the pattern in your hair, in your bones. And that gets set up really early on. And the patterns can change over time depending on where, like what stage the cell is. Like if it's going through mitosis and things, different genes are turned on or off based on different things. So the really interesting part of that is the way that the marks are regulated is really complicated and complex. There's a whole lot of different proteins that can read different marks and add them and erase them. And so the two proteins that I look at are an erase set of their marks. So BAC1 and ASXL erase or cut off the ubiquitin from histone H2A. And that like, releases the DNA and makes it more actively expressed. You're turning off and off switch, which leads to gene activation. So what I'm looking at is understanding which genes BAT1 and ASXL turn on. So there's a whole lot of different erases, and the way that it's targeted is really important because if the targeting goes wrong, you'll get genes turned on in the wrong places, right? So there's another part of ASXL called a PhD domain, which is a type of domain which is thought to bind to different histone modifications, and no one knows yet what type of histone modifications it binds to. So what I'm trying to figure out is what its target is. So why we know that it's really important for this is when in cancers, so in leukemias, quite often this domain is lost and you lose the localization and genes are sort of just randomly turn on all over the place, which is what you don't want. So understanding how it's targeted and then how it go, goes wrong will help you figure out how the cancer is caught and how to, how to fix that going wrong. 